guys, Tomboy601, and I'm writing a little bit of a wrong today. Uh, last week, during my tier list, I completely forgot that Azur Lane Queen Elizabeth existed at all, and that's because I didn't own her. It's the one Azur Lane commander I didn't own, and after everyone pointed out, I felt bad sliding the, the predecessor to the queen who celebrated her Platinum Jubilee this past week. So I decided I'd spend my hard-earned money, pick up Azur Lane Queen Elizabeth, see what she's about, and uh, have a good game in her. So that's what we have today. We're out in the worst fight. One thing uh, I want to set up is I'm not 100% confident in Queen Elizabeth, the Azur Lane Commander, just because, well, let's go ahead and talk about the base trait and the skill, and then we can continue with this. First things first, base trait is a bit of a weird one because it spreads its buffs out over so many things. It feels like it doesn't really do a lot. So your battleship main battery reload time, your uh, main gun AP shell damage, and your shell grouping is all boosted by up to a maximum of 2%. And then the unique skill on this vessel, well, it's Skywatch. It boosts the duration of the spotter flame by up to 30% and increases the number of charges. And that is all, that's great and all, but there are so few British battleships that have spotter planes, it feels like it's not 100% worth it to really use her. So there's that. Anyways, well, we are here on Greece, the small version of the map, one that I really enjoy. We like to play this left-hand side because there's two caps over here. We want to keep it. But this Omaha is charging around the corner. And, well, Omaha is charging around the corner. Only one thing can happen to them. One... <laughs> <laughs> two, what, two shells in and he gets dev struck that's how we love to start off a game um we're here on greece like i said we're playing this left hand side of the map just because it has the two capture points relatively close together if we can overwhelm this side quickly get both of the capture points then once we do that we'll be able to start gaining our way in points make ourselves a comfortable lead and make it so that we can go ahead and win it first things first so we do have to eliminate this Koenig over there. We can see he's starting to kind of drive straight in, nose in, into this island over on the left-hand side. So we want to kind of cut across, minimize our target profile. Thankfully, our destroyer has just laid some smoke there, which will give us some sort of smoke cover. So we're going to go ahead, move the ship over. We could choose to push in, but it would be a little bit risky because he does also have a destroyer covering him over on that side. And, uh, well, we want to play a little bit smarter, but we can see... He's gone ahead and kind of used the island for cover. We're waiting, we're looking, we're trying to find right where we can go ahead and hit him. We think, okay, let's go ahead and fire. Get a good chunk out of him uh, with all of those pens. And then conveniently, as if we planned it, used the dock to come to an emergency stop and give it um, our time to turn around. Now, while we make this turn, let's go ahead and go back to the build and talk about the Queen Elizabeth build. As we said before, she is a brawler commander, and I have been learning to enjoy the brawler commanders a little bit more, but it's only because of the the inspirations I've been running. Um, as you can see, I'm running uh, Megatron and Palo D. Ravel, and the reason I'm running Megatron is because we are running brawler. So what brawler does is it reduces the main battery reload time by 10%, uh, increases torpedo detect detectability range, but it cuts the range of your main battery by 10%. What that usually means is that that secondary boost that you get from uh, like grinding out a tech tree ship that gives you that boost of 10%, you'll lose that. Or what will happen is if you're running on a ship that doesn't have that, your, your detectability range will actually be smaller than your firing range, which is really, really annoying. So what I've come to do now is to run Megatron. If you're not familiar, the Transformers Commander Megatron boosts the main battery range on battleships, which uh, comes in handy for when you want to be able to recover some of that negative, uh, some, of that, some of those downsides on Brawler. And this has been the way that I've been able to recover it. Uh, also... It just helps a lot because usually either you're running that brawler build or you're running that dispersion accuracy build. Dispersion accuracy build has flammable cannoneer. That's definitely what a lot of meta players play. It's what a lot of people like is that flammable cannoneer build. And uh, well, when you have, when the majority of people are playing that and that boosts people's range by 10%, you are looking at a situation if you're running brawler 
where you could potentially be down 20% range compared to your peers. So that's always been something that has caused me hesitation to run the Brawler build is that disparity between those two. But with Megatron, it does help ameliorate some of those difficulties and make it just that little bit more more useful and viable to actually play. So yeah, that's my that's one of my tips that I've been running. Anyways, we've made our way around this island and well, we're starting to get in trouble. We've accomplished our goal of taking A and we're about to take C and we are starting to see broadsides galore of the enemy battleships because well, they've gone ahead and pushed through on A. Thankfully, we're, we're going to come up ahead right here just because we now have the two points, right? realistically both of us have have conquered the same amount of sea or land right we've we've both controlled half the map it just happens that our half of the map has two capture points on it so we are coming out ahead now this is going to be a point of finding broadsides we want to use these islands for cover enemy war spite is over there we're kind of looking at him but we do also see that this new york and this cavor are going to be kind of pushing into us Good things we know about the Gavor. One, the majority of, of its guns are in a broadside configuration. So if he wants to bring all those guns to bear, he's going to do what he's doing right now. He's going to turn out and give us a beautiful amount of sighting to be able to engage him. And we're going to be able to chunk him for a decent amount. So we need to be uh, kind of keeping an eye on that. We also just need to be keeping an eye on this war spite over here. Of course, he can do some fairly decent damage to us, but we want to go ahead, protect ourselves, use this island and allow us to go nose in, kind of read when the Cavor is going. We know most likely that Cavor is running Palo de Revel, which is another brawler commander. So our reload time should be fairly similar, right? We kind of may want to kind of engage off to the side, see if us firing our guns at a different enemy makes him give him, gives him the confidence to kind of turn out like he did. Of course, he hits us for a good chunk of damage right there because we are just way too turned out. We've gone ahead tap the brakes and we're going to go ahead and throw it into reverse because we don't want to break the seal of that island there we don't want to break the horizontal line because if we're looking b is now being taken by what we assume is the enemy destroyer which means torpedoes could be coming and as we see the torpedoes are a coming uh and we we don't want to kind of just easily uh walk right on into those torps so we need to be careful of that uh, our secondary batteries are starting to engage the Gavor. Of course, Gavor will have an advantage here because, well, he has those beautiful SAP secondaries that we we, we are starting to worry about. We're going to try to start kind of engage his front guns, see if we can knock out his front guns because we know the majority of his weapons are on the side. He's going to want to come out to the side. If we can knock those front guns, we can more encourage him to go ahead and give us the broadside. But Visby pops up right here. And when you see the destroyer, you want to shoot at it. We're like, okay, we got a couple of seconds left onto the guns. And uh, we just want to start to en engage him. We get a decent shot right here, doing fairly well. Of course, Kavor is fairly low. We, we're kind of trying to balance our way between them. In New York, well, he's still full health. We see Visby's torps come in. Of course, they are those, those fast, low-damaging um, pan-European destroyer torps. And we don't need to worry about them too much as far as an alpha strike goes, but they are something that can definitely potentially put us on uh, put us on alert just because they could knock us out. New York showing us the better of the two broadsides. We go ahead and fire at him. We were like, oh, wait, we should definitely pr prioritize target the Visby right here. New York continues to turn out. He's going to give us the best angle to engage. So we're going to go ahead and engage him. We're kind of locked in a stalemate with this Cavor up front. So uh, using this time to engage the New York is going to be the best thing that we can do just try to get that him knocked down because our battleship over on that other side not doing too hot we can see Kavor is coming in um he looks like he's kind of turning trying to get that broadside thankfully uh just gets a little bit of pens up in the superstructure nothing too damaging to worry about but we do need to worry now we see one more torp come in from visby and uh Kavor looking like he wants to go ahead and just ram us we have a ton of health left so we need to go ahead, kick it in gear. One thing I want to talk about is if you notice the uh, the secondary lock re-pops up automatically. I haven't really been able to use the secondary lock a ton, but it popping up automatically is a really nice feature. Kavor goes down, then Visby comes right in front of us. We want to kind of minimize the damage. We have enough health where if we need to run him over, we'll have it. But uh looks like we're, we're 
in luck, our secondaries are able to take him out. And now there is just the New York to go ahead and handle. We'll go ahead and use the uh, the Visby's corpse as a bit of a turning assist, if you will, and start to try to line up on the New York over here. Um, we do have this gap in the island, and we, want, we may want to try to utilize that, but we don't want to get too cocky with it because... We all know how geometry works, and sometimes it, it looks like it will work, and sometimes it doesn't. So we're going to go ahead and keep on checking these angles. Of course, you never know which gun is going to fire first. We go ahead and hit the first one, and it must have hit an island. Um, and he is actually able to successfully get all of those shells through. And this is a blessing and a curse. The good thing is, he's now on reload for all of his shells, right? We know he has 30 seconds, and we have 30 seconds to go ahead and uh, take him out. So we have all the time in the world. Just nose in. We know we can go ahead maybe knock out those front guns but we end up knocking him out secondaries get him and yeah guys that's the match um like i said queen elizabeth i don't know if it's the best just because of the lack of uh spotter planes on the majority of the british bbs but she's definitely fun if you like the video go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i hope you have a great rest of your day see ya